With three weeks to go, this election is still too close to call. In our series of interviews with a range of party leaders, tonight we hear from a leader who hopes to influence the next government and whose party claims to be the voice of Wales. But can Leanne Wood and Plaid Cymru really deliver? <laughs> Well, good evening, Leanne Wood, and thank you very much for joining us. This election campaign is bigger than ever before, on a bigger stage for Plaid Cymru. How do you think it's going for you and the party? I think it's going well. The leaders' debates have given us a platform that we've never had before to speak to millions of viewers, not just in Wales, but right throughout these islands. And I've been glad to have the opportunity in order to explain to people our platform of policies because there are a range of policies in our manifesto that uh, were we to have an influence in the scenario uh, of holding the balance of power would benefit communities in parts of the UK outside of Wales yeah. as well. And we'll come on to those policies uh, in the manifesto here. Um, we've seen you in the debates, uh, very close to Nicola Sturgeon, but the SNP, they're on fire, aren't they? Yes, Scotland is a different country to Wales, of course, and the experience that people have gone through in Scotland as a result of the referendum campaign has invigorated uh, Scottish politics in a very interesting way, and that hasn't happened uh, in Wales or anywhere outside of Scotland. Right. Why, why are they doing so well and Plaid Cymru isn't? Well, they took control of a minority government back in 2007. That was the beginning of the SNP's success story. They proved to the Scottish people that they could run a government well, and people gave them a majority in 2011, uh, and then they went on to put forward the manifesto. We've had nothing like well, the hang on, same hang on. If we scenario. go back to 1999, mm. uh, you, you were polling better than them. Uh, in terms of share of the vote, in the Assembly elections, you did pretty well. You hit a very high 28%, uh, didn't you, in 1999? Mm. Um, SNP, 28% as well in the Scottish Parliament. If you look at the Euros, you outpolled them. You, you, you were doing better than them in 1999. What's gone wrong? Well, that just shows where we can get back to if we uh, focus and are able to convey to people in Wales the, the messages that we've got to build this country, to, to get us to the prosperity that we know that we can achieve here in Wales. Yeah, but I wonder why devolution as a vehicle, as the thing you really wanted, has delivered for the SNP, they've made the most of it and they've grown. They're heading for 40, 50 seats. Now, back in 99, you had four MPs, <coughs> they had five. You might have three this time, you might be lucky to keep, the, keep those three, you might have four. They're looking at 40, 50. You know, devolution has delivered for them. It hasn't been, you've gone backwards. Well, I think it's the referendum campaign that's marked the big change in Scottish politics. They had six MPs mm. after the last election. They're all driven which by is, the SNP. Well, well, of course, you're right. But the fact that people have been, uh, there's been a democratic revolution effectively in Scotland. People are engaged to uh, an extraordinary level. And people are really keen to ensure that they get a say in shaping the way that their society is run. And the referendum campaign opened the door to that and that feeling hasn't gone away now what I want to do is get Wales into the same place now I'm not saying that we can do that tomorrow there are grave mm. challenges in our economy which we have to put right and show people in Wales that we can put it right but I really do believe that here in Wales we could have a similar conversation about where we want to go and when we do that we'll see le similar levels of engagement among people here too but what I'm trying to get at is that they've built on it, they've got the momentum going uh, from devolution uh, as the party of independence. That's mm. what they are, it's very clear. Plaid Cymru, perhaps, in your narrative, Plaid Cymru is maybe the party of dependence. You want more money from England, you want more money from Europe, it's all about the dependency culture. It's not about standing on our own two feet. You haven't built that narrative, have you, as a party? It is absolutely about getting to the point where we can stand on our own two feet and ending once and for all our dependence. I don't want Wales to be reliant on handouts from Brussels or from London, but we've been disadvantaged financially for such a long time. Ever since the Barnet formula was invented, we've been disadvantaged year 
on you. Now, in order to get to that point of being able to stand on our own two feet, that's going to be very difficult if our financial disadvantage continues. And that's why we are calling for parity with Scotland, not just in terms of resources, but also in terms of powers, so that we can end our third rate devolution settlement uh, and get on the road to turning our economy around using the powers uh, under uh, the devolved system in order to do that. Yeah, parity with Scotland, that is your big mantra, isn't it? And yet, they put so much more into the coffers in terms of their tax take than we do. So why should Wales have as much as Scotland? They put in much more in terms of the percentage than we do. But that's got nothing to do with the way in which the Barnet formula is formulated or the way in which Wales gets its money. The Barnet formula was locked in for Scotland as a result of the vow that was given by the three party leaders ahead of the referendum. That's changed the game completely in terms of Wales's funding and my argument is that Wales deserves parity with Scotland uh, and I've heard no good argument for justifying why we don't deserve that additional cash. OK, but, but we put in about £16 billion in terms of our taxes into the coffers. Public spending here is £30 billion, so we do quite well, don't we? We, we? we need to increase our tax take in order to have this parity with Scotland. You're absolutely right, we need to increase our tax take. We need to create more jobs that pay well, and that's why we're putting forward policies like uh, raising the minimum wage up to the living wage and to increase employment by changing the way that public services uh, are procured by the, the public sector from the private sector, and also our policies for uh, bringing more businesses out of, uh, out of business uh, rates because we believe that if they are freed up um, from those, uh, that extra uh, finance, then they could be encouraged to take on an extra member of staff. So all of these uh, are policies which are designed to create jobs in order to get more money into the tax right. box. But the but, crucial but at, question... At the moment, it's all about getting money from England, isn't it? It's all about this £1.2 billion pounds that you want from the Treasury. Extra money, please give it to us. You make a big play of the fact that that being part of the European Union is worth £40 for each person in Wales. Um, it's all about, please give us more money. It's not about standing up on our own and concentrating on growing wealth here. That's what we have to do, there's no doubt about that, and that's why we've put forward these proposals to create jobs and stimulate economic growth. You're absolutely right, but to try to get to that point where we can stand on our two, own two feet is going to be very, very difficult to do that while we have our hands tied behind our backs with an unfair uh, and okay, disadvantaged let's, financial sector. Let's focus on the 1.2 billion then. Where, where's it going to come from? It'll come from uh, the general taxation pot, the, uh, the, the, the fund that comes from Westminster, the Treasury Fund, um, and we uh, we want to end austerity as, as well, of course. And if we were to go ahead with our proposals, which are you know very measured proposals to increase mm. departmental spending by just half a percent, yeah. then communities right across the UK would benefit from that. Let, let, let's look. You, you're asking for extra money at a time when everybody's talking about cuts, except except a few parties, including yours, of course. Debt is 1.5 trillion mm, and growing the, the deficit is, it's it's growing actually mm. yeah three billion while we're on air uh, yes. three million while we're on air um now then uh, you're a working mum you do the weekly shop you live within your means i mean you say austerity as if it's a swear word i mean it's all about living within your means isn't it and you probably do that when when doing the weekly shop, don't you? Yes, and um, running a household is very different to running a government. A government has a number of responsibilities and making sure the citizens have work and are able to have a livelihoods is a key responsibility of government. And what we're saying is not that we don't want the deficit to be closed or that we don't want debt to come down. You want to increase it. You but want an we, extra 1.2 billion. You we want, want to increase to, the deficit, don't you? We want to invest in order to bring more money into the tax pot. And you, know, you acknowledge by if, if Wales were to get that £1.2 billion, pounds, the deficit would increase? That's what you're asking for? Well, it, our, under our plans, the deficit would be decreased over time. Um, when? Well, no, by, no time scale. by 2020, we will have uh, reduced it significantly. How much? Um, down to 2% of, of GDP. Uh, and we can... And how would you do that? Well, by, um, by making cuts and raising taxes um, from... Uh, from people who can afford to pay them at yeah, the moment. But th th that's not enough to close the deficit, is it? Well, we well, could. We could raise. Nineteen billion, we're talking about. Well, we could raise uh, ten billion pounds 
by changing national income contributions so that those who pay the most pay at the same level of basic rate taxpayers. We could raise another £10 billion by removing the uh, tax relief on the higher rate pensions. We could raise billions by scrapping the Trident replacement system and by re-employing those well, how much, how much staff exactly that were... Well, yeah, with, with Trident, we, we, you, we, you often mention Trident, 100 billion, but it's over 30 years, isn't mm. it? We're talking 3 billion a year here. And the knock-on for Wales, if it were to be divvied up, you're talking, what, 180 thousand a year is nothing it's nothing you know trident would not be this panacea 180 million i mean it, on its it, own you're right it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't close the gap but as part of a, a wider package which would also include cracking down on tax avoidance and tax evasion as well then it can form part of the overall picture and i can't see how it can be justified that we spend 100 billion pounds no matter over how many years we're talking on weapons of mass destruction that in all likelihood would never ever be used used when we have people needing hospital services, education services okay. and the services okay. that our local authorities You say provide. overall you're going to cut the deficit, even though you're, you've got a big shopping list. Let, let's look. Living wage uh, for every in Wales by 2020. Now, a lot of those workers will be in the public sector. How much would that cost? Well, if everybody was to have the living wage, it would take a, a quarter of a million Welsh workers out of poverty wages and it would actually raise more money into the tax pot. And let me explain why. Because, first of all, the in-work benefits that people claim because of poverty wages would no longer be need to be paid out. And the tax, additional tax take from people earning more money, it would raise around two, between two and three billion okay. pounds a year. So the Living wage is something that would actually benefit the Treasury. Okay. Um, you also talk in your manifesto about an extra year of schooling for three to four year olds. How much would that cost? In a region of about £150 million pounds is the cost of that, and that would have to come out of the Welsh budget. And, of course, we've seen a 10% cut to the Welsh budget. And it was interesting, uh, just last night on the televised debates, I challenged the leader of the opposition to um, pass an emergency budget to end the Tory cuts that are planned for this current uh, financial year. That means about a £200 million pounds cut to the Assembly budget budget. Now, if th that emergency budget were to be passed, then there would be uh, extra cash to the Assembly for these all-important priorities like childcare, which of course have an economic impact as well. Right, you scrap the bedroom tax, 470 million that would cost for the UK, wouldn't it? Yes, yeah, about um, 10 million for Wales. Right, um, you wouldn't raise the pension age, how much would that cost? Um, well, our living pension proposals would cost in the region of about £10 million and uh, they would be paid for by cutting the tax rate uh, to uh, higher earner pensioners yeah, you're, you're that I mentioned You're spending a lot earlier. of money here, aren't you? Uh, and, and you're promising to get the deficit down by 2020? Well, what, <clears throat> what we're doing is talking about investing to raise more money into the tax pot. Now, uh, Nobel Prize winning economist Paul Krugman has talked about the UK being obsessed with the elimination of the deficit. While studies show that for every pound that you spend in terms of infrastructure investment, three pounds is brought back right. into the economy. So I don't accept that this idea of public spending is just spending. So you don't want it to get rid of the deficit. Seen... You, you, that's not your priority. We want to see the deficit closed, come down, but we're not prepared to put an artificial deadline on it eliminating it completely at all costs because that means that public services will be damaged and people risk losing their jobs. Okay, let's leave the so-called dependency culture then. There's 1.2 billion that you want to come into Wales. Let's talk about wealth creation here um, and about attracting big business here. Um, are you comfortable